so then uh, here a video on uh, the line art and I'm gonna be using for this one I'm gonna be using uh, I'm using the newest version of Inkstitch and that comes with some new features and I'm still learning with some of these features but we'll see how this goes and if things go the right direction so and with the new feature of ink stitch we can do an outer route with the running stitches and before we were able to accomplish that by first converting the lines to uh, a satin and then do the outer route and so that were extra steps but now in the new version we can go and directly convert it to the uh, running stitch and do an auto organizing of the running stitches so what we'll do is we'll go to the Bezier tool and we'll start drawing we can draw different ways and as you can see my line is right away a dotted line yours may not be like that uh, that depends on how you have yours set up in the preference window and in the preference window to go there we can go double click on the tool and then we have here the pen and I have mine set to the last used style and so you can also have that yours is set to this tool's own style so I have mine at the last used style and I'll continue using that and then so yeah uh, what I have found that uh, what is fairly important or fairly important but uh, I noticed that as you're drawing the nicest is that we almost have uh, snapping turned on but if I snap here to the handle then we make right away a connection and that can can be done too that's okay too and we'll go and draw our lines um, and I may not uh, work too accurate along the lines but that's okay uh, I do that for for the purpose of the video otherwise things become so lengthy on taking care of all the details but we can go and drag these handles over and let's see as you can see now uh, because uh, the snapping was on and we were right on top of the one node we ended up this became all one path and then to a certain point it shouldn't really matter where we start drawing and which ones we gonna be putting first and which ones we gonna be putting last Oh, as you can see I because I had snapping on the line started jumping over onto the other line because I was within a certain distance of it and with a snapping tool too uh, you can turn it on over here but here with the arrow key there you have all your options of what kind of snapping you can turn on and turn off so there's many many options of snapping and then we go back to our tool again and so that is a single and I should maybe zoom in a little closer so you can see a little better 
and I'm not gonna go and do all the contours really as long as we stay fairly close to the contour and you can see there's a little X and that is the your snapping what what shows up where it's gonna snap if you can't see that uh, uh, let me see if you cannot see that uh, that magnifying as you can see, as you can see there's a so now I have the magnifier on and I'll turn it up a little bit and then you can see where my mouse is there is showing a little X underneath and that is where the snap where it snaps to the other line and here too you can see now I have the X and now it snaps there you can see it there it snaps to the to the center line of this one and as you can see too like there's there's cross lines what are showing up here and that is that it lines up with another node so like that is something new with uh, with the newest version of Inkscape and that can be turned off too uh, I haven't checked that out all completely yet on where to turn it off there are so many new things like a, a new Inkscape and a new ink stitch so there's many new things to explore and yeah it is a little time consuming to go and draw all your parts and pieces but I'll maybe I'll go and skip a few pieces here in a bit just to speed up the process so now we have uh, that leave in place and we've gone along the one side of the stem so now we want to I would try to uh, continue as much as possible along the continues along a certain path that uh, you're trying to make it a kind of a continuous way But we can stop it. Uh, I'll go and turn off snapping from here on because uh, I want to show you later on something else what also shows up. So we're creating these lines. And the order and the direction that should not matter and once you have all the lines then there are a few steps you have to be careful with uh, that you follow those in a, in a certain order and go around this one and then I'll stop there and I'll start here 
like before when we were doing it it uh, was making a little bit of a difference on uh, if we made it right away a continuous line uh, we would be careful on where we stopped and where we started but that doesn't really matter now anymore so now I started over here on the bottom again and I'll continue this line going to the center okay now we're just about there and as you can see uh, it starts looking a kind of a mess here in the center but uh, now I'll go and take the node select tool and as you can see this node is quite a bit away from an, another point so we could go and make an adjustment but I'll, uh, I'll keep that one a little short and I'll try to not to forget about that one, that that one is uh, a little ways away and then we'll come back to that point for a bit too yet and then we have here a few more little lines to go and then we are ready to go the, the process and if your lines were were all solid uh, you can first draw all the lines in the in the solid line too and then at the end okay I'll keep that little spot open so there we have the outline is drawn and now we can go and in the objects panel oh, layers and objects uh, I'll move this one out of the way for a moment now I'll go back to my image I'll turn my image off and now we can see that we have all our lines now the important step what we have to do is we have to decide where we can let ink stitch do it right from here the auto aligning of the of the running stitch but I would recommend that you decide first on where you want to start and where you want to end because uh, once you do the outer route you cannot really change it unless you go and bring your steps back or go back in the history and uh, so if you're unhappy uh, once you have applied it you would have to go do a number of steps back and change the start point and the end point and try to uh, set it to a different spot so then what I did is select my uh, object where I want to start and I like it to start over here and then come as much as possible around and I would like it to end over here also so then what I did is extension ink stitch commands attach command to selected object and I'll select there the auto route running stitch starting position and I go and apply then I go to the last one where I wanted to finish and I go extension ink stitch commands attach command to selected object 
and there I want to have the outer route running stitch and position and I'll go and apply so then we can close out of there so we only need to do that as far as I know on where we want to start and where we want to finish then what I did is oh I gotta go to the select select everything and for the size this is I would like it to be a triple stitch so then what I did is ink stitch and the prams and I went and did a bean stitch so that is the same as a triple stitch and we make that a one and so there to a certain point two again we have to uh, uh, do the first one and the last one we would have to reapply the params a little bit and we would go and do the the lock stitches but I'm not 100% sure if you have to do that here or if that is gonna be done in the in the other one in the other part so I'll go here to neither and I'll go and apply and quit so now everything should be uh, applied as a, a triple stitch and still everything is selected and then we go extension ink stitch edit no sorry we go ink stitch tool stroke and we go outer route running stitch okay here there is a number of things so if you want to preserve the order of the running stitches so that is a possibility then if that is what you would like then you go and check mark that and there is a possibility that there are gonna be some jump uh, jump little jumps in there so then you can go and add uh, trim the jump stitch and we can see if if that happens in this design and add nodes at intersections and that is probably I don't know how important that is uh, I found that there were also some spots and it would create uh, narrow short pieces with it so it takes a little bit of playing around with it and see exactly what happens so if you go like this and we go apply and once it is applied then we can see now everything the in the layers panel or object panel the outer route is all the parts and pieces are being grouped and you can pick out where there is an underpath uh, so there is an underpath there is an underpath underpath and this underpath uh, let me see I gotta zoom in here you will see that is just a really short little piece I'll drag it out of the way here oh I'm not selecting it because there now I got it you see that is by uh, not using by not using the, the snapping or not going and making uh, minor adjustments on lining up the notes we are getting these extra 
tiny little pieces in here. So it takes a little bit of getting used to on what is the best way of making the, the nodes and some of the adjustments they can be made. So say if this one had to be properly there and then you're gonna get a little jump here and there so we could have gone say maybe and have that one sitting over there joining up so that is why it becomes fairly important to line up your lines as good as possible and zoom in as close as possible and there you can see there is a trim command here and there is also a trim command oh that is on the on the whole object but here uh, as I made you aware there we kept this one away just for the purpose I had uh, and we added uh, for allowing uh, trim the jump stitches and so the distance here was big enough for that ink stitch decided to trim if this line if we would not have check marked the trim the jumps then we would have seen a jump stitch over here would have been created and so yeah that is why also make sure that you're lining up your nodes as good as possible and let's see And then we can go and uh, let's have a look at the uh, extension ink stitch simulator. Oh, I got only uh, one little part selected here. That's the reason why. So I got to go in the select tool, make sure I select everything or now I'm the whole layer is selected we go extension ink stitch uh, visualize simulator and there you can see the order that it is stitching out everything And there you have it. Uh, we can go realistic view. Oh, the realistic view. And you can see it stopped over here. Why it did that, I am not 100% sure, but uh, that is maybe where I left the 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 end uh, point. So if we move that to the end, we can go and check that out in a second yet. So and there you can see, there is, I click now on the jumps. And so there is one jump here, and the trim, and there is two trims. Okay, that, uh, that should be about it. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll check this point, and that is right across there from the leaf. So we'll check if that marker is uh, let's see where is that marker now as you can see the that marker is is not on here anymore so we cannot go and make any adjustments to this right now uh, probably we can we can uh, move a few nodes around if we so desire but I think everything is okay yeah we can as you can see we can we can still uh, manipulate a few of the nodes but because we have it as a as a triple stitch it becomes all 
fairly hard to maneuver all these things around so then the easiest part or the easiest way to do that if we want to make some adjustments that we go to edit undo history and then we can go and look at where do we need to be and uh, let's see uh, it might be hard to okay here is uh, attach command and there is an attach command okay so here is the so I want to be over there that is the start oh I don't know if it's uh, Okay, I may have to go and just back up a hair more than what I had anticipated. And now I would imagine, as you can see, now we are back into all our individual paths. So now we'll go back and select the first one, extension, ink stitch command, attach command to selected object and we wanted there the start point for the running stitch and we go and apply and as you can see it is sitting here uh, now in the objects panel No, it becomes okay now I think I yeah now I know that is the there now I should have it selected but I'm having issues with trying to move it and that doesn't want to work Control key shift. It seems to be locked in place. What is going on? As you can see, uh, maybe I should go and delete that one for a minute. So now let's see what have we got. Yeah. Now I have uh, the first one. We'll try it once more. Ink stitch, command, attach command, and the outer root starting position. And we go and apply and close. And I find that a kind of weird that it is putting that marker all the way there and it is a loose marker it doesn't seem to attach to anything well that is uh, probably what is going to be needing some some work from the from the programmers yet or so but I'm not too too fond of how that that uh, how that goes so now we'll go uh, I have that uh, running stitch selected and we go ink stitch command attach command and then the outer root end position 
and apply. And then we close out of that one. And as you can see, this is an end position. Oh, I had uh, that one. That one needs to be deleted. But this one too, as you can see, it does not seem to uh, stick to a, a start point or to a certain node. It, we can just go and seem to be able to put it wherever. So I think, yeah, I don't know what to think here. So I'll have to look into that a little further, see if I can get more answers on why it's doing what it's doing. Then we go extension, and we go extension, ink stitch, and visualize. We go to the simulator once more. Now we can see it started over here on the bottom. Oh, I forgot to outer out them. That's because we made all these uh, these changes. So we have to select everything. Extension, ink stitch, stroke tools, outer out, running stitch. And let's go take that one off now and see what happens and we go and apply and then we close and now we can see everything is back into one object again and we go extension ink stitch and we go to the simulator and we can see it started over here on the bottom so that is that is right where we want it and now we can speed it up a little bit and now we can see it did stop here on the bottom so I don't know exactly what happened there with the start and and uh, and the end point but uh, they did not show that they were really attaching to uh, to the to the object. So, but there you can see it uh, it creates all the all the parts and pieces. And as you can see here, now that I'm zooming in, we kept this one a little bit away, and now it has created the jump in there. And if we show here the jumps. Now you can see it it does not have any jumps anymore so it created automatically a stitch point going across to to that one part and that is the same in here the lines were not perfectly lined up so it created automatically a stitch there okay uh, have fun with this and it takes a little bit of experimenting on where do I want to start, where do I want to finish, because with the outer routing we are going to be having that some spots are going to have one more stitch line than another stitch. So, uh, because it has to do a path a certain direction and it will have to come back, so whenever it, it has to come back in order to go somewhere else there is gonna be ending up extra stitches and so yeah play with it and have fun with it and thanks for watching bye for now